Now, your first year as a nail tech and you're figuring out what path you wanna take, where you wanna work, how you wanna work as a new nail tech, there's four options that you could choose from work from home, booth rent, commission, or you get your own suite and kind of start your own business that way. Uh, we just talked about working from home, the pros and the cons of working from home. So if you haven't checked out that video, uh, we'll have it linked in the description as well as in the cards above. And so um, this one, we're talking about booth rent. So what are the pros and what are the cons of booth renting as a new nail tech, a beginner nail tech, graduated nail tech? Um, if you fall into any one of those categories, is booth renting a great option for you? We're gonna jump in pros and the cons. So if you don't know who we are, my name is Nakai, this is Priscilla. And um, yeah, we're bringing this podcast to you every Monday so that you can have tips, tricks, insights, perspective on how you can succeed in this industry as it continues to grow and expand. So we'll start with the cons. Yeah, let's start with the bad news first. And yeah, we'll, we'll start end with the bad news <laughs> first. Um, so the first one, the first con to booth renting is limited storage for supplies. Mm. Um, limited storage and limited working space, would you say? Yeah, because traditionally when, when you are booth renting in a space, you're, you're booth renting, right? So you can, it's pretty self-explanatory. You have a booth mm -hmm. and for nail tags, you have a desk. So you're desk renting, right? Um, and so, yeah, so you really don't have a whole lot of storage. A lot of times, if you're booth renting in a salon, there's two different ways that you would booth rent in a salon. You can booth rent in an all nail salon where there's several nail stations and you're paying for one of those. Um, the other option is you're booth renting a station in a hair salon, right? Mm -hmm. which, is kind of, which is how I started. Um, there was a couple of nail techs the owner was one of them, everything else was hair. Um, and so it, in those environments, you, you don't have a whole cabinet of- Polishes. Of, of, of storage that you can, mm -hmm. you can you know, put your supplies in. You're really only given, the traditionally, desk. your desk. That's your storage space. So whatever you can fit in your drawers, you might get like a small, small cabinet or like I had like maybe like a few shelves on a wall. That was my storage. What I can fit in my desk and what I can fit on two shelves on a wall. Yeah, and I, and I kind of add to that like it's, it's kind of, I mean, if you think about it, it'll be a little difficult because like you almost have to take like an inventory every single day and then also be aware of the, what clients are coming in and what they're gonna want um, as well as like, do you have the colors for that? Um, and so like, cause like if, if you're, if you're buying supplies in like larger, in bulk, in like larger if you have quantities a whole line to, of to, colors, save, to save money, right? Where are you um, gonna put are, it? Are you gonna be able to have all of that inside of your desk? Yes. In the space that you're working? Um, um, plus, I mean, if you think about like the liquids and, and um, you know, like all those stuff, the wipes. Yeah, like I've seen, I've seen where people will sometimes reuse their big rolling um, supply box that they get for their kit in their school. Um, and, and when they're booth renting, they'll just lug that thing back and forth, right? Because they too. have all their colors and, and nail art and stuff brushes. in there, brushes and whatnot. Um, you know, lights. sometimes, and it also depends too, like the, the amount of space that your booth, um, allows, right? How big of a nail station can you have and how many drawer units can you have? Um, my space when I started was, was very, very small. Um, and so it made it very difficult for me to store, you know, certain supplies because essentially when you're booth renting, you still work for yourself. You are, you're an independent person. You're running your own business 
out of this small space in someone else's salon. Yeah, and then and then of course when you're starting out, you're not going to have like like let's say a client walks in, right? And you were only anticipating doing a specific type of service. Like like let's say gel, right? And the yeah. client comes in. You're still and building you only, up your your um, your product line. Yeah, and, and somebody comes, comes in and wants acrylic, and they or want acrylic, color acrylic, and you don't have that yet. You, you don't have it, or it's at your house because you were only anticipating doing gel for this day, right? I mean, you can you can lose on some clients. Not saying it'll happen all the time, but yeah, it just depends, and it also depends on 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 your budget too. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't know many nail techs unless you um, are, you know, able to go out and invest in a whole product line before you even build your clientele. If you're able to do that, then that's amazing. Um, but most nail techs that are starting off, um, you don't have any income coming in, so you really don't have that option. So you're kind of building your product line as you go. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so, we'll jump into so yeah, the so next. It's a little limited. Yeah, we'll jump. So, limited storage space is a con mm -hmm. if you're wanting to booth rent as a new nail tech. The next con is the people drama. So, um, and this one specifically from the lens of you have no control. Um, and there's quite a few things you don't have control over when you're. Booth when renting. you're booth renting, yeah. So if you can imagine you're you're renting a small station in someone else's salon, you are in an environment where everybody essentially works for themselves. Now, there's always going to be people drama. No matter mm -hmm. where you work, whether it's the beauty industry, corporate, it doesn't matter. There's always going to be drama. But when you have several people that are essentially running their own businesses and they're just renting these small little you spaces know, desks to run their business out of you have no control over how jane runs her business and she sits next to you mm -hmm. versus how susan runs her business and she sits behind you so you run your business a certain way you attract a certain type of clientele jane same thing, Susan, same thing. When those things clash, the owner of that salon can't say nothing. They can't say nothing. anything. Like you're running your own business. Yeah. You know, they can't necessarily go to Jane and be like, hey, Jane, I don't like the way you're running your business. It's making Susan feel uncomfortable, right? <laughs> um, and, and Jane is going to jump back and say, well, this is how I operate my business. I only pay you for this station. And so you can't really dictate to me and how I run my op my operation. Yeah. And so you, when it comes to people drama, like there's really there's not a whole lot you of, can say or do. Yeah. There's like, you know, the, you have no control over that culture. Yeah. And I, I, I mean, I'll give a quick story. The guy who cuts my hair, he he booth rents to some people, and some of them that they everything in there is hair, um, but there's there's older ladies who cut like older gentlemen and older ladies and my barber's a younger dude. And so like the music that he's playing, you know, it's not like crazy vulgar, but it's not like you've it's, got these, you've got these old older, <laughs> you've got these older ladies walking in. Right. And then you've got, you got freaking Drake like, playing in the background. And then he's like, Hey, how are you doing today? And it's like, whoa you know like <laughs> you've got an old lady you've got a young gentleman cutting young young dude's hair with with the dude that i went to high school with and played basketball we're all talking and about all sports cussing and in the background you, we're all talking about sports and stuff <laughs> and then you've got a nice old lady comes in and then you and then you've got this this switch hey how's it going uh you know hope who are you here for today and you know and you got drake playing in the background it's 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 just it it's crazy you know like and and so like one like the 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 ladies that are booth renting doesn't have control over like okay you can play this music or not right yeah. and my barber you know he's a he's a good dude so he's not gonna like blast everything like like crazy like that so but then also it, it's also flipped right he yeah can't, he can't he can't tell the other other folks like what music to play what music mm. not to play or like you know like what conversations to have versus what conversations yeah. not to have or like what to wear and what not to what wear. To wear and what that's not a huge to wear. topic. Mm -hmm. We're gonna do a whole nother um, 
episode on that, like when it comes to professionalism as a nail tech. So mm-hmm. you, nowadays you see all of it. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And so, yeah, so you just, you don't have control over your environment. Yeah, and so that's, that's another con to booth renting. Um, and then the next one is, this con is... I kind of touched on it a little bit, huh? Not quite. No? In a way. This one? Yeah, but, yeah, you did. You, she mentioned it. Yeah. The con is, you are the only nail tech in the space. And so, um, if you're booth renting, like... She said she booth rented and there was a few nail techs. So you're the it only nail tech. It was just me and the owner. The owner was a nail tech and yeah. I was a nail tech. Everybody else was hairdressers. Yeah, so I mean, the con to that, and I'll just start to get your ideas flowing, is like, you don't have, you don't have any help. Mm-mm. You're new, you don't have any training. Um, you, mentioned, yeah. you, mentioned, um, you mentioned before we started that, like, you're essentially starting to market yourself. Yeah, you're, so if you're the only nail tech working in a salon of like seven hairdressers, right? Obviously, you're not the breadwinner for that space, right? They just had a little mm-hmm. corner that, that they thought, okay, you know what, maybe I can put a nail tech there. It might be somewhat accommodating for some of my clients, like the three people that asked be like, oh man, it'd be really cool for me to like get my nails done while my hair was processing. And then the mm-hmm. owner is thinking like, dang, that's a good idea. Let me go put a nail tech over here in the corner. That, and I'm just, I'm playing this out exactly how it happens. I'm telling you. Um, right. So then in comes a brand new nail tech, just graduated, still needs some training, has no clientele, put the nail tech in the corner. You're not the breadwinner in that location. The breadwinner are hair services. So you go on the website, you look at the marketing materials, you look at the conversations they're having with people, you look at all of those things. I promise you that owner is marketing hair, Mm -hmm. right? Every, yeah. They're marketing hair and then they're not really saying, hey, come in to get your nails done because they're just collecting a few hundred bucks from this little corner compared to the thousands of dollars that they're collecting for all the, the, the hair services for the, from their hairdressers that they're, they're able to provide their clients. And so what happens is this kind of becomes a little bit of a trap sometimes because as a brand new nail tech, you're thinking, Oh man, cause this kind of happened to me. Okay. Now, now I'm just talking about myself here and, and I'll be honest, like you're probably going to relate. And especially if you're a nail tech that has experienced that you're definitely going to relate because when you're a brand new nail tech and you're thinking, okay, this is a huge opportunity. Oh my gosh. Like I'm only paying a few hundred bucks to rent this desk. Um, well nowadays it's not a few hundred bucks anymore. It might maybe like five or $600, right. To rent this desk. Um, and it's a busy hair salon. So I have access to all these clients that can come and sit in my chair. Now, let me tell you how that plays out and how it becomes a trap. It becomes a trap because usually unless a client is going in to just get a haircut, that's a pretty quick service. But if somebody's getting highlights, they've already been sitting there for hours, right? Now, if you're a brand new nail tech, you're not doing 45 minute services. Mm-hmm. You're not doing an hour service. So it's not like you can go and offer them a gel manicure, an acrylic fill, or or a structured manicure, or, or a, pedicure. Uh, a gel pedicure. Like you can't offer them quick services because you need training yourself. So a gel manicure for you might take two hours to do. Well, now you can't service that client because their processing time is only forty five minutes, right? So what you think is a a massive clientele just sitting there waiting to sit in your chair it becomes a trap and now you have no clients you have bills and you're watching all these people walk in and out and you can't really offer them any services and then and then on top of that none of the people there are nail techs so they can't help you with problems that you're dealing with with your sets and so you're the you're the only one that's like you're you're really fending for yourself. You're the one looking up videos. You're the one trying to figure out why your sets are falling apart and yeah. lifting and all those whatever else happens. Yeah, it's just it's it's a it could feel very lonely. Um, there's nobody in the room to that you can that you can really relate to. Like you're not going to go to a hairdresser and be like, hey, look at this new product that I bought, and the hairdresser's going to be like, oh my gosh, mm-hmm. I tried that. Do this, and they're not like just having having a relatable conversation. 
from one industry to the next, like it's just very difficult to have that. Um, yeah, it's it's a really sad situation for nail for like nail tech. I, I was actually approached by a hair salon owner not too long ago that basically asked me like, hey, I have this nail tech. She's going to be working in my salon. Do you offer training because she just graduated? So at least that owner understands and respected the fact that, yes, this is an opportunity for this person to start off because it's low overhead. But at the same time, the salon owner recognized that this person still needs training. My clientele that are coming in have a certain level of expectation, and I understand this person is not going to be able to provide that for my clients. Um, and so that's really something that you have to look for, and that's a massive con. Yeah, yeah. So if you weren't aware of that, be sure to think think about that mm -hmm. if you're deciding that you want a booth rent. Um, the next one is kind of the other side of the coin, which mm -hmm. is you have a booth, a space that booth rents to all nail techs, or yeah, it's a full 80, service nail salon. A lot of them are nail yeah. techs, um, and so um, this one. I'll just go. I'll just go right into it. The con, the real con about this one is competition culture. Because yeah, everybody every, there works for themselves. Every, they're all mm -hmm. trying to make their own. They're all trying to fill their own pockets. Right? Yeah, yeah. They're all they're all working on building their own mm -hmm. clientele, especially if you're newer. Um, like, it's you. You're you're going into into a war zone. Um, if I'm, being you can honest. be, and it really depends. It depends on it the depends culture. On the the culture that that salon already has some salons do really good where they already have a good culture it's a helping culture it's a good environment where everybody kind of drives and bounces information and techniques um, off of each other which that in my opinion is a great culture to be in um, but then you have the opposite of that where you might have the competition culture where you're you're basically fending for yourself and um, they won't share information. They're not going to share information because they, they don't really want you to succeed. Because yeah. if you succeed, then that means that you might be Taking. able to take and steal their clients. And that that's a whole nother mindset. Yeah. Um, perspective change that, that that people need to make. Yeah. In itself. But I and, mean, go ahead. But I, but I mean, like, you know, like they're, if if you start doing services faster, quicker, more efficient, they look better. Right. Some people get intimidated. Some, by yeah, some people they they'll get intimidated, and some clients may jump ship. Um, not only just because of the sets, but you know you may maybe relate that, maybe. with them personally more yeah. than the other person. And so, and, but then it, but then that'll start to create like some bad blood. Yeah, in the space, usually what you know? happens in spaces like that, and this is something that I've experienced when I first started my salon because. Um, Usually when you have clients coming in, whoever they sit with the first time, the client automatically feels like they have to see that same person every time. And if they and if they try to sit with someone else, they're going to offend that original nail tech. And so there's this like weird, like awkward like feeling for the client because the client's like, oh, man, well, I'm going to cheat on this person, but I really like what that person is doing. Um, how do I break up with this nail tech to go try that nail tech and not offend anybody? Um, and what in my salon, what, what I was able to do is right off the bat is create a culture where it's more client centered, where the client never felt uncomfortable going from nail tech to nail tech, right? At one point in my salon, a client would have 19 nail techs to choose from. Hey, you didn't like the first one? Go to number two, go to number three, go to number four until you find somebody that you love going to mm -hmm. because you're not going to get along with every single client that comes in your door, right? And so where the culture gets a little wonky is, is you start feeling the heaviness from the client, right? You, like the air is kind of thick because the, you, like the client has this, like there's this... Um, this, the client is like portraying this energy and then the nail tech start feeling that energy and then you start feeling like, oh, well, I'm feeling the client's energy and it just, it can become a mess. Yeah, and then that actually... Especially if you have a, a, a like a one or two nail techs in the environment that 
that has the mentality of it's all about me and I'm not telling you anything, I'm not sharing anything, like mm-hmm. it can get really upset. Not not only that, that kind of reminded me also, but like but like if somebody walks in, right? I mean, however, who takes the walk in? Who takes the walk in? Right. Like whoever, like yeah, you've got yeah, you've got you've got three or four people that are just sitting there, um, and lady comes in, right? You you're new. You you you've got the time. You've got more time than than majority of the other. But somebody, but, but there. somebody who has experience just got a random cancellation. Yeah, but and so and so you're the one that's like talking to the person, and then I, I mean somebody may come over. Oh yeah, I'll, I'll I'll do it. I'll do it. And then they take it from you. What are you but, gonna do? Like yeah, you know how do you how do you handle that? So that though, that's that's something those else. Those are all cons. That those are all things that can happen in that environment. Yeah, those are all those are all things that are possibilities. Yeah. And so if you're wanting to booth rent, the cons just to recap is limited storage for your supplies mm-hmm. your all your products or, or whatever you have um, there's people drama so you don't have control over what anybody says what anybody does how they run their operation because they're all running their own business renting yeah, a desk they're all running their own business mm-hmm. the next one is you are the only nail tech in the space that is booth renting to you um, and so you don't have any help or you may not have anybody to kind of guide you um, throughout your your career. And there's also a booth renting space that has a f- bunch of nail techs. So their f- booth renting space full of nail techs, mm-hmm. right, starts to kind of, it might create a competition culture um, to where, you know, everybody's kind of preying on your downfall because you're the, you're the new kid on the block. Mm-hmm. And so... Um, those are some cons to think about if you are considering booth renting. Now to the good news, the good the good parts of booth renting. Uh, the first one is uh, booth renting is it's lower risk, lower risk with with a higher chance for actually creating a good um, starting point. For yeah, your, for your yeah, career. lower overhead. You're not paying rent for this massive location. Your utilities. You're not usually. You don't pay for the utilities. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, light, water. You know, gas sometimes. Um, so there's definitely lower risk. Um, you're not insuring the whole space. You're just insuring a small desk. Um, if and that's another thing you want to make sure that you get insurance regardless. But um, so yeah, so it's a lower lower overhead. Yeah, yeah, larger. So that's definitely a pro. Yeah, the larger expenses, you know, you may not are not resp- your responsibility. Yeah, so I mean that one, that one's a pretty good con. I mean, there's not much to talk big about pro. there. Sorry, <laughs> different headspace. That's a big pro. That is, is that is a good risk. pro. It's a lower risk, yeah. um, with the larger expenses you don't have to pay for. The next one is is the salon environment. So unlike working from home. The, the space for the clients is an actual salon environment. Yes. So, go ahead. Well, now I feel like, okay, we just gave you all of the cons yeah, yeah, for yeah. what the environment could is, look like. You kind of already have happen. like the sour taste in your mouth, but let's just imagine for a minute, you, you, find a good you space. found a, a great environment, a good salon, it has good culture. Um, good people right that environment would definitely be easier for you to build your clientele because the clientele is gaining that experience that they're looking for compared to if you were working from your home which was the video that we just talked about yeah yeah and I mean and I mean a client wants to go into a space Mm -hmm. that you know feels safe you know it's a public area Um, it's geared to them they're able to escape relax Mm -hmm. kind of just fall into the the service itself and so that's that's a that's a good pro versus the working from home Mm -hmm. option um the next one is is actually a really good pro which is you get walk-ins um i mean what's better than people walking in for your clients yeah especially if you're working in a if you're booth renting in a salon that stays pretty busy um if if they stay pretty busy you're going to get some walk-ins here and there that that come in. And again, it goes back to it depends, right? If you're if you're the only nail tech working at a hair salon, we talked a little bit about that, or if you're in an environment where there's a lot of nail tech. So these pros are really assuming that you found a good culture to um to take your 
your services to. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, so getting walk-ins, um, the salon owner, they're already paying certain expenses in marketing and they're, they're branded. Um, they're, they've already made the investment to make the phone ring. They already right? have a, a sort of um, reputation. Yeah, they have a reputation. Their phones are ringing. People are trying to book an appointment. They have on, an online um, um, website uh, websites and... where people can go. And so they kind of already have, they've built that from the ground up. And so you can come in with the low risk. It's a great environment. Chances are you can benefit from some walk-ins. Yeah, and and the, the the last the last pro is 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 lower rent or like you know lower cost for paying because you're new you don't have that yes. clientele you can't pay for you know your own space or um, yeah you know all of those those large expenses so you're not like you're said, just renting your desk you're renting essentially your desk. Mm -hmm. um, and a lot of times when you're booth renting there are some um, common areas like for example you're you might be renting your nail station um, but then the pedicure area might be a community area right where there's several uh, pedicure stations um, there's a laundry room in the back or whatever the case may be so there are some like community common spaces but your rent technically that all of that is included in your rent but technically you're just renting your nail station Mm -hmm. So if you're a first year nail tech, you just graduated beauty school and you decided to booth rent. Um, so to recap, you have you have several pros to booth renting if you decide to go in that direction. The first pro is there's lower risk. You don't have this massive overhead um, and you're able to to start off uh, without having that that overhead. Um, the second pro is your salon environment. Assuming you chose a salon that already has a good culture, they have great people working there, um, the environment is nice, your clients feel like they're coming into a space where they can actually get away, clear their head, and they're, and they're getting a really good experience in that um, culture that you chose. The other pro would be because of that culture, you're able to benefit from walk-ins. So clients are coming in, the phones are ringing, um, and you have a better chance of building your clientele because the salon is busy. Um, and then lastly, the pro to booth renting in your first year would be it's a lower rent. Traditionally, you're just renting a, a nail desk and you have, might have some common spaces where you might be sharing a pedicure station with someone else, but for the most part, you can, you can start off at a lower cost. And um, so that would be um, the top four pros for booth renting as a nail tech in your first year. Yeah, so outweigh the pros, outweigh the cons, figure out which one is good for you if booth renting is the route you decide to walk on mm -hmm. um, if you are a new beginner nail tech just graduating getting into your first year and so um, we hope you enjoyed watching this video if you found any value in it or you want to check out one of the other four sorry one of the other three options if this is your first year in the industry those links will be in the description below be sure to subscribe follow us on social those will be in the description as well uh, leave a like, leave a thumbs up, and um, yeah, be sure to subscribe. We've got a lot more content trainings and stuff coming out very, very soon. And so you don't want to miss those. We want to make your success easy in the nail industry. Mm -hmm. um, and so, yeah, be ready every Monday. There's no Iron Beauty. Another episode every single Monday. Anything else you want to add? Which, which avenue are you going to choose? Are you going to work from home? Are you going to booth rent? Are you going to work on commission or are you going to go off on your own? Exactly. So go weigh those, put those on the scale and see which one is best for you. See you guys in the next video. Bye.